What's up guys? Igor here. I've got a special video for you today. I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step, from beginning to end a drawing of a penguin and we're gonna do it in Pocket Procreate. You see the name at the very top. Uh, this is just my gallery. Uh, some of these paintings might be familiar to you if you've seen my other videos. Anyways, let's get right into it and uh, you click the plus on the top right and I'll zoom in on a brand new canvas and that's what we're gonna start with. I'll cover the tools as we go along but Basically, I want to show you how to quickly draw a penguin. Um, let's go ahead and open up the color menu. Yours should look something like this. It'll have two rings. Uh, you can swipe, zoom the inner ring to um, hide the different hues. So you have a slightly larger selection for um, uh, values. Okay, let's go down here and let's grab like a dark gray. We don't want any color. Right now, all we're, we're worried about is line art. Uh, for the line art, you can pick almost any brush. I like to use this one. Click the little pencil icon under the illustration tab at the bottom center. You see the top left um, brush and that's the one that I like to use. And we can drop down the size of the brush to let's say 10%. So at 10% and uh, about halfway on opacity, it allows us to do a couple of strokes. Let's go ahead and draw this, um, I wanna say rectangular shape, but it'll have a rounded top. And this is going to be the shape of our penguin. I would do this, uh, actually, I will do this in, uh, I'll hold the phone landscape, uh, but do it in portrait mode. And the reason for that, this way I can make him a little bit taller. Now, Pocket Procreate is great. Like it has almost all the same tools as regular Procreate. The limitations I think come down to canvas size. I have not been able to choose a specific canvas size at this time. And uh, another thing to know, it doesn't have a redo button. It has an undo button, but no redo button. So cool, we've got this rectangular rounded top shape. Uh, this is the base shape of the penguin. Uh, it's okay if you know the strokes are messy and all that. Don't worry about them being perfect. This is the sketch layer. I'm also gonna teach you layers. All, it's all in one tutorial. So we can go ahead and do a little bit more line art. Let's uh, tweak the, uh, the brush size a little bit smaller and let's go in and do a inner carving, I guess, of the penguin. We'll have these two dips and then we'll have this this shape inside of it. It's kind of like a pawn in a chess match. It's like a very basic shape like that. So it'll follow the cylinder and then it'll, have, it'll pinch at the neck area just a little bit. I need to adjust it right here. So if you want to make adjustments, click on the eraser at the top, top right, tools, lower its uh, brush size so that it's not humongous. You can go in and you can kind of go along the edges of this line art to to fix up some of the um, you know really thick lines because I guess we we selected too large of a brush but then again it's not it's not really an issue because it's just the sketch phase right okay so we've got we've got the body for the penguin um, all, all ready pretty much we're missing the eyes, the feet, and the flippers. Well, obviously, uh, face features like the beak as well, which we can move on to right now. We're gonna do all of that before we go into color. So everything so far is done on one layer, but you could you could put the facial features on a separate one if uh, you aren't you know if you're worried about ruining any of the line art that you've already done. I'm not worried about it, so I'm not going to do that. And I would advise you not to either. Keeping the sketch all on one layer is is fairly good because um, you kind of won't get attached to it, you know? So we're gonna do a line. Basically, we're drawing a skateboard. This is how I like to create my eyes. You can, you can do um, whatever you want, but go ahead and color them in with a couple of strokes. Doing more passes will give you a darker result. So this, these are the eyes, right? We zoom in, you kind of see, okay, we've got a bullet shaped uh, penguin. And I like to put my mouth really close to the eyes 
so not like uh, too far down and it kind of creates a smudged you know chubby looking face so we're gonna go ahead and do that I can go in with the eraser need to drop it in size so I can erase the inner um, ex excess uh, strokes okay so we've got the face um, now let's make adjustments I need to make a few adjustments to the line art it's not perfect I want to make the the top of the head a little bit more flat and a little closer to the inner shape I don't know what, what to call it the facial color area I'm not I don't know <laughs> I'm not even gonna butcher it okay and uh, let's let's drop the fins in we're gonna have some some fat uh, fins along the side sides of his arms like this we'll do I, I guess it's a uh, round like a I don't know what the word is an oval but more like a a little bit more pinched than that and then we can go ahead and use the eraser to clean up the in inside basically right now we are connecting this oval shape to the rest of the body and the reason for that is we will separate it when coloring and you'll kind of see how I do that alright this one's way too short make sure that they're at least sort of lined up it's okay if they're a little bit off like you don't have to make it perfect because just like in real life uh, organic things are very very rarely identical to one another even if they're on the same creature okay and we accidentally got a random stroke sometimes this happens when you zoom out or zoom in too quickly so keep an eye out for those uh, you can if you catch them early you can just undo and if you've already drawn past that point you can just go back to you know just grab an eraser and whatever layer it's on just kind of get rid of it or just color over it okay so we've got the early very early sketch layer um, let's draw his feet in and again it'll be two ovals oh, whoops opened up the layers tab we don't need to go there yet don't worry about that all right drawing his feet in great like that looks fine right hopefully <laughs> hopefully you guys agree okay let's make his tummy a little bit more round now you can make all sorts of variants of this penguin but that's for you to explore you know I'm just I'm just trying to give those who have no idea how to do this to sort of be able to follow along and hopefully get a similar result so right okay we've got that done um, I almost want to do something with his forehead like make a widow's peak or whatever they're called let's see how that'll look yeah let's do that I don't normally do this but or Assassin's Creed hood but we can do that sure all right and I want to make the inner head part you know the part that surrounds the head a little bit less circular and kind of have a sharper hook towards the bottom so that it makes a little bit more of a rounded square instead of a sphere okay great now let's open up the layers tab at the very bottom we have the base color of the canvas which is white and then we have the layer that the penguin is on which is just a black outline you know there's no color or any other pixels um, around that so we are able to hit the plus on the top left click and hold it until it like enlarges a little bit scroll it down drop it that's our um, color layer now this layer is underneath so think of the line art as uh, well basically don't worry about um, ruining it it's it's not going to be affected because we're on a completely separate layer so let's increase our brush size a little bit uh, let's pick a slightly lighter color so that it's different from the line art and here we can turn up the opacity to 100%. I'm going to go even lighter so that it's easier for you guys to see. Um, I, you know, if you're following along, why not just do the same thing? 
just go with like a dark gray, but not too dark so that the line art again is separate from it. And you want to go ahead and color in all the, actually let's do the whole thing. I'm going to simplify it. Let's color in the entire piece. Now I'm not going to cover backgrounds in, on this video because it'll, it's pretty much more of the same. And uh, since I usually do character design, like the end result, I think pretty much will speak for itself. You know, you'll have a similar product to what I usually put out. Um, obviously, I'll spend a lot longer on some of my paintings, cleaning up all the lines and coming up with, you know, different poses and the concept themselves. But these penguins, I've, I've cranked out um, plenty of these before. So we've got the entire penguin filled in. This is when we open up the layers tab again. Now this time, on that same layer, we'll swipe to the right. This adds white borders, white uh, edges to the border of the layer. That means we can no longer draw outside this layer. As you can see, if I change colors, let me grab like red, I'll undo this, but you see, it only fills in what we have. So I'm gonna hit undo. Here, what we wanna do is grab a gray, lighter gray, much lighter, and we wanna fill in the tummy. Now, don't worry about going over the feet here a little bit because I can just clean it up with the color picker, which I'll show you how to, how to do. Let's fill in the face. I'm gonna drop down the brush size, zoom in, do not be you know self-conscious about needing to zoom to get those clean lines because I always zoom in. I'm trying to not zoom in as much so that it's easier to see in the video, but take your time, zoom and and hit those lines, you know, exactly how how you'd like. Now here, I rushed it a little bit. I'm going to click and hold my finger over the color I want, which is this this gray. After it's been selected, I'm just going to, on the same layer without changing anything, draw over the feet. So now we've got that. Great. Um, color, we're gonna need color. So, but um, actually let's hold off for that just a little bit. Before color, let's go with like an orange, a very intense orange uh, beak. I'm gonna go to about a 10% uh, brush size or 10 pixel. Is it pixels? No, it's 10%. It's kind of kind of weird to measure. You don't really. All right, now let's go and uh, work on the eyes. I'm um, even though there is a line art layer. We actually need to redraw over the eyes. So I'm just going in with another dark gray, uh, dark gray color. And the, the eyebrow, the unibrow is not as important here. And the reason for the unibrow not being important is it's mostly a way to kind of line the eyes up next to each other, but I'll incorporate it because it's kind of one of my signature features and I think it'll add a little bit of characteristic to his face. So for the eyebrow, unibrow, let's grab the gray color near the outline of the penguin and you just, just go over the entire line. Don't worry about it. Okay, great. And also actually let's grab this orange off the mouth, increase the brush size a bit and, and go over the feet. I, I needed to undo because I went a little bit too far. Um, ended up drawing a little bit on the stomach. Okay, cool, now we've got the feet incorporated. So now we'll open up the layers tab. Let's turn the line art layer off. You click that little white circle at the very left. When it's empty, that means the layer is off. Make sure you click back onto your uh, color layer. And now you have this kind of crude, but you know, shape of the penguin, that's what we wanted. Okay, great. Here, there's a couple things we can do. Um, let's clean. Let's start cleaning up the lines, and you can start cleaning up the very outer lines, or you know, kind of just work your way from inside out. And I think we'll work our way inside out. 
first I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna check for any uneven jagged unwanted colors undo that here go around the face grab the face color so I'm mostly working with the same exact colors that you know are already on the layer so we're gonna go in now the eyebrows are kind of being the eyeballs are being covered up by the unibrows so we can grab their color and just uh, do a couple of strokes to refill that area clean up the eyebrow line it's okay if it goes over the eyeballs a little bit you know it's gonna kind of give this guy a forehead which uh, which is nice we've got we've got gray over here that's uh, left over from the foot that we were coloring because the line art was covering it up we didn't see it so I'm gonna re redraw that part now what's left you might say well leaving it off here is too simple there's no highlights and there's no shadows so we can start incorporating those and uh, this is this this stuff could take a while um, but I'll try and sort of speed speed through it a little bit uh, let's start with I want to say the biggest shapes but um, we'll probably go in and do some of the details first so let's change the color to a little bit more brown and darken it somewhat grab a smaller brush and go along the bottom side of the of the um, penguin's mouth so here you see what I just did I have the opacity not fully up so what I did was I grabbed the color right next to that dark brown let me undo let's do that again I'm gonna show you so you see I have two colors right and the opacity is let's even lower it some more so it's easier to transition so we have this dark brown and we want to blend it with the orange all you do is you select the orange you make a couple of single stroke passes like you see how they start layering now you select the orange again and you make uh, some more passes along the edge and now it's starting to layer itself and you basically just start selecting colors which are in between the color that you kind of want to uh, the colors that you want to blend and you keep working them until they do so so here I'm going to just go back and forth softening them up uh, this might take a little bit bit of practice but this is essentially the process of going from that really flat looking penguin to a fully colored one so now we'll go and we'll grab a highlight you can just go like a ridiculously bright color in this case it's like a bright orange and you do the same thing and you'll kind of soften it along the soften up the top of the beak with it drop the uh, brush size grab like a white color and we've got a reflective nose now we'll keep it just a plain circle for the eye we can go darker along the bottom actually we'll just go dark towards the inside of it let's grab a slight highlight around the bottom of the eyes because the the eyeballs are sitting inside its you know fur its skull and if the light source is above the penguin it's going to cast a little bit of highlights here so we're gonna do that and then same thing with the forehead because the forehead is kind of in direct light now we're going to still see how we're still using that low opacity brush and all I'm doing is I'm brushing um, that really light color and I'm doing less passes of it than I would in the area where I want the most intense amount of color right so along the forehead I'll make sure that I get like 10 15 uh, strokes so that the initial like the color that I actually picked is the resulting color that's there and along the edges of the head 
oh, whoops my computer fell asleep there um, and along the edges of the head you you go you do less strokes to get uh, to kind of blend that so here we go oh man this video is probably going to be a little bit longer so let's let's try and get it done ASAP like But you know, maybe this this is probably a slightly more effective way for somebody who's just trying to learn uh, to kind of get into it. Because when I was starting out doing the whole painting stuff, I I just was not sure about the process. And uh, over time, I kind of developed my own. So something like this, I would definitely be interested in watching. So hopefully, that means uh, you guys will too. So here, I want to soften up the forehead part and blend that in towards the nose. We can do this, this kind of, I don't know, I don't know what kind of shape this is. It's just got triangles with gradating colors from really dark to a lot lighter uh, along the forehead or along the nose the bridge of the nose and then uh, this will go down towards the um, eyelid we can also grab this dark color from underneath the forehead and go along the bottom of the penguins eyes now don't leave it that dark grab the edge of this gray color so it's a slightly lighter gray whoops and soften it up and then we're gonna we're gonna soften it up even more in just a second now since I'm doing the details first this is taking a while but the rest of the penguin uh, should should go along a lot faster let's grab some of the white from the background We'll do two reflective dots, both put them on the right side, which is the same side that the nose is reflecting from. Uh, let's grab some of this orange and slightly drop it in on the inner part of the eyeball. So the orange nose is reflecting some of that uh, bright orange into the, into the eyeballs. And you see how it kind of makes them look a little bit more alive shiny you know now to color the rest of the penguin I'm going to I'll leave it on the same layer that's fine so the cheeks I'm not gonna go all the way to the edge I'm gonna end up blending those in let's get a quite a larger brush right here so these circles are spots that I'm going to um, they're the lightest uh, lightest parts you know on the body so from the circle I'll be taking colors and blending them outwards and downwards now for the outer part of the penguin make sure we're an alpha lock we are we want to go in with a slightly darker gray and go underneath the wings so see now we are creating an outline not with lines but with color and that's what I was talking about originally. We can also grab some of this dark orange and go along the base of the feet. Grab that light orange again and smooth out those colors. Now go in on the stomach. So don't worry if this... Uh, I'm probably going too quick. I, I, I realize maybe I'll slow it down and try to simplify other animals uh, a lot as well in the future but hopefully you can kind of keep up and, and get a feel for what the process is like great I'm trying to move my mouse for a second make sure this uh, computer doesn't fall asleep on me again
So now I'm going to go in and this really dark gray, I'm going to cut it down to size to pretty much form smaller lines that uh, that will create the in inside part of the wing. So now we can go in with a lighter gray and get some of it on the outside of the arms, some along the forehead. So if I was doing, say, an Antarctic setting, or maybe even something like a jungle scene or whatever, if I had a lot of color around the penguin, instead of using this light gray, I would be using a light gray, but mixed in with some of that color. So, you know, it would be like a light bluish grayish color and uh, I have a few paintings which kind of uh, give you examples of that but unfortunately they're not on my phone so I can't just pull them up in like a matter of seconds so maybe I'll um, either link them in the bio of the video or we'll see what I do with that but this is pretty much the way that I do penguins and uh, if I was doing a realistic penguin, the approach would be somewhat different because they're a little bit more complex and uh, the way that the camera captures the color is different than, you know, just kind of randomly choosing from the color wheel and dropping it in. You know, in some cases, because their fur is so dark, you won't even you won't even uh, get to see the shape of the wing and for somebody who's new to art it's kind of hard to understand uh, how and when they should do that it's even hard for me to understand okay great uh, I forgot to soften up the cheeks hopefully I didn't talk much about what I was doing there but it was again more of the same I'm going in and I'm smoothing out edges blending colors just as I was blending the the eyes and the nose and the forehead everything is done with a very similar process now I think I can go lighter on the forehead here to really make the coat seem shiny I could go darker on the coat. I should have. I should have went uh, darker from the initial start, but this will do. We can use this uh, slightly darker gray to kind of push the elements of the fur, um, separate them further from the head, and kind of show that. It's like a separate layer of, uh, of insulation. I mean, we can, we can even add a bow tie if we wanted to, you know, like you can do whatever you want to your penguin. It's your penguin. Um, okay, one last thing that's left. Actually, there's two, I guess. One main thing uh, is to, whoops, I swiped that up, um, is to go along the edges of the painting and, and soften these lines because they're really, really rough. And we can also add a, um, we can also add a, uh, sh not shadow, um, I lost my train of, train of thought. Somebody was knocking on my window. Hmm. Well, there's a lot, a lot that I could do, but okay. I created a new layer. No need. Let's go back to the same exact layer. Let's go back to that same exact layer. We're gonna grab the eraser and start going in along the edge. You see that the eraser is not at max uh, opacity. So that when I make a pass, it doesn't it doesn't erase everything. Uh, you have to be kind of careful with a really large eraser. 
and it'll, it'll give it a smoother edge, a softer edge. You could obviously use the airbrush eraser, but this is the eraser that I like to use. I mean, you could even have everything on one, on one layer and then just paint the edge softer. But we're gonna go ahead and erase it. The reason that it's better not to have everything on one layer and to paint uh, and to just erase the edge until it's uh, your desired softness is that you can use this object in many different ways. You can uh, change the background a lot easier. It's not attached to it. You're also able to do things like um, just uh, a, a lot of like duplicate this layer so you have multiple penguins that you can again uh, manipulate in whatever way you would like and having everything on one layer makes it harder to go back and make changes so I'm teaching you to kind of separate it all well not it all <laughs> just I guess the main objects that you're painting you could definitely have everything separated but then you're working with so much layers that it could get overwhelming on like a small device so here we're gonna get this wing sorted out we're gonna take a zoom out and we're gonna look everything looks good except this edge right here I purposely didn't erase around that because it doesn't need to be erased stuff needs to be added so here I'm gonna create a new layer drop it underneath the penguin the reason I'm dropping underneath is you'll see <laughs> uh, I grab this gray now since I'm underneath the penguin I don't have to worry about drawing and uh, getting rid of whatever I painted inside of him and I can go along the edge and add to it because I picked the local color it it blends all right in and add to it until I've got a desired shape right and I can make the edge as soft as I want because it's uh, I'm painting I'm adding to the layer from the layer underneath I'm adding to what's visible and that's the other technique that you could use uh, instead of an eraser you know if you need to add if you feel like your pieces your objects really small and needs more there you go um, great now we can collapse you click on our penguin layer merge it down to the gray layer underneath we no longer really need the line art but I'm not gonna delete it it's just it'll be there uh, to delete you swipe to the left and then you hit the red delete button I'll show you See, but we're not going to do that. Now, I did say shadow. Yeah, let's add a shadow. Hit plus, create a new layer, drop it underneath. Let's grab, I don't know, some lighter gray, not, not go crazy. Here, let's say we recreate this. And if we look at the way that our reflection is, uh, done the shadow should be on the left side because it's the opposite side of the reflection right small detail that you know maybe maybe might make a difference uh, that doesn't mean we want to get rid of the full shadow you, you still want a little bit of uh, of ground uh, shading like right next to the, the object uh, kind of helps ground <laughs> the object no pun intended into the scene okay great now I'm going in with an eraser and softening up the edges but I feel like uh, the eraser will only do so much so now I'm going in with an actual brush and I want to grab some darker colors start grabbing the colors between those and softening them up Let's go even darker. The closer we are to the object, the darker the shadow. Um, I don't really like the shape of it, so I'm gonna show you another tool, transform. If that's too tall, we can shrink it down. If yours turned out fine, then you don't even have to do this. Now, that's good and all, but the top is now too sharp. I need to soften it again. Basically, I'm trying to go for a more vertical vertical shadow. And I can, with both fingers, I can grab it and transform it. Now, I want the feet, they just look like loaves of bread, which are sitting 
in uh, very uncomfortably in front of our penguin. So to take care of that, I think it needs to be a little bit of a darker color. We can go in with the darker color right underneath the feet. Again, helps ground the object. You have shadows down there because uh, a lot less light is able to make its way uh, into those cracks between surfaces, those areas. And I think the top of the the feet could use a little bit of highlights. More than that. Uh, much more than that. It's too sandy, I think. I'm going to undo all that. Uh, there's a lot of levels on, of undo in this app, so that's nice. Uh, I'm definitely an artist that makes a lot of mistakes, so I need that undo button as a, as a friend, a very familiar friend of mine. Uh, while there's other things that I could do to you know improve on this piece, I think this would be a good first step-by-step -step follow along. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm, I, you know, I can't wait to do more if this is stuff that you like to see. Uh, let me know, leave some feedback, link me your images, I want to see them. Let me know what you thought. Share this with your friends, you know, who love penguins or something. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs> before I go, I will also show you how to export this piece. So you back out to gallery, click the little wheel, click on your image. You got that box with the arrow up. You can hit JPEG, which will export it. Well, let's do that scroll down save your image it's now in your library do the same thing you can even export the video recording so it'll it'll kind of prep that when that's done save video and now you've got the video and that's exactly how I do all of my paintings and drawings and uh, there you go alright again thanks for watching and have a good day